Good morning. Today we will look at Luke chapter 15, verses 1 through 10. It's two of the lost stories that Jesus tells. But first, uh, yesterday Jill asked, well, who was Luke? Luke was a physician. He was uh, not a Jew. He was uh, a person uh, who was highly educated. They uh, determine that by the style of his writing, by the, you know, the precise wording and everything. And he, he did his um, investigation into the life and times of Jesus very diligently. He starts this book with, uh, I set out in order to write an orderly account. And he, and he writes it to Theophilus, who is unknown, but, but could be a, a ranking Roman officer. Um, don't know that for sure either, but who Theophilus was. But both Luke and Acts were... Uh, mention that person's name. And so Luke uh, traveled with Paul uh, for, through, through some of Paul's missionary journeys. Uh, he's very much thought of that way. But, you know, he wasn't an eyewitness to Jesus, to his life and times. He might have encountered him at some point in time, but he wasn't one of the, the disciples by any stretch of the imagination. But he could have easily been in the crowd at some point in time. But he came to be a believer in, in Jesus Christ uh, as this Gentile convert, convert you know, and, and stuff that way. And uh, Luke and Acts, the, the two of the books that, that this Gentile wrote, uh, most likely to another Gentile, to a Roman, uh, take up quite a bit, actually, of the New Testament. There is no other author in the New Testament that has more space, even though like, you've got First and Second Peter, First, Second, Third John, the Revelation, I mean, and so there's um, a lot that he wrote for us, this, this Gentile. And, you know, we're all Gentiles. I mean, I don't know, maybe somebody somewhere that tunes in once in a while might have a little Jewish blood, I don't know. But anyway, that's a little bit about Luke. Um, chapter 15 begins with all tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and complaining and it, you know you know about this fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them and and Jesus became aware of this or maybe he overheard them or maybe they said it right to him you know what are you doing eating with all those you know despicable people you know Spend some more time with those of us of importance and, you know, who knows what. But he tells the story, the parable of the hundred sheep. And losing one, you know, the shepherd goes and looks. And it says, you know, he says when he found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And, um, you know, rejoice with me for I found my sheep that was lost. And um, Jesus compares finding that sheep to he says there'll be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than 99 righteous people who need no repentance. And, and for the Jews in Jesus' day, I mean, there, there were many of them that, according to the law and according to their sacrifices and everything, were righteous. It's like this, you know, the rich young man that comes and says, I have followed all of those commandments. I have done all of this all my life, you know, and... and so Jesus is saying that, you know, for, um, for those of us that were brought up, you know, going to church and Sunday school and learning about Jesus and, and knowing Jesus all of our lives, I mean, heaven rejoices over us. And, but for someone who has, had never heard of Jesus or wasn't raised that way to, to be introduced to Jesus and to come to know Jesus, um, is is a great thing you know the angels rejoice god rejoices and as i just mentioned about luke you know he was a gentile so he was one of the the lost and as much as the the jews thought the messiah would be coming only for them um jesus said you know he is for all people you know you know the the tax collectors the sinners the the romans the samaritans you know the the people that the Jews thought were just despicable. And, you know, but the Jews are God's chosen people. And and yet they don't accept the Messiah. And we all know that. Uh, 
Oh, there are Christian Jews. I, I know some that way, but uh, for the most part, Jesus is saying in these in these parables that when someone who hasn't grown up with a relationship with God or hasn't, you know, in his day wasn't wasn't a Jew, but has come to believe in the Jewish God and the Messiah. I mean, Jesus says this is this is the goal we should have is to spread the good news and to invite invite everyone to to welcome Jesus to believe in Jesus and 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 he says there's much rejoicing that way and then the next parable is the the woman having 10 silver coins he says if she does you know if she loses one she she searches diligently until she finds it she lights a lamp and sweeps the house and searches and then when she finds it she calls her friends and rent neighbors and says rejoice with me for i have found my lost coin and again, Jesus says, I tell you, there's more joy in the presence of God and the angels over one sinner who repents. And, you know, it's, it's you know, coming to know Jesus. And, and, and it, it just kind of leads me back to remembering again, you know, my, my friend Galen, was, I was growing up. He only, they only lived in McHenry for a year and a half or two, but... You know, he invited me many times to come to worship with them, even though he knew that I went to to the Lutheran church with my parents, you know. But he wasn't afraid to share his faith, to invite others to believe. And, and you know, growing up in our small communities, uh, you know, we, we knew who was Catholic and who was Lutheran and who would, who who went to the free church and, and you know some that got when to go to the Methodist Church in you know Gray City or or in Juanita or you know but but we knew that the majority the majority of the people in our area were were connected to a family of God and um, so the you know the the outreach you know in you know where I grew up in McKenna, 155 people at the most I suppose but. Maybe not even that, and much smaller than that today. But um, when I was growing up, I mean, we were all pretty much connected one way or the other. And that's not so true today. I mean, I, I think about, I mean, we just had Easter Sunday morning service. And, and how, many, how many people that are members of a church uh, in their community, I mean, didn't even bother to go. I mean, it was no big deal. And how do we how do we reach those people? How do we how do we get them to want to come and to want to be a part of the family and 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 cause this rejoicing? I mean, it's it's not only in heaven that would rejoice, but I mean, we would rejoice ourselves. You know that uh, to have someone that you know maybe doesn't doesn't know Jesus intimately or, or hasn't you know, seen fit to take time for Jesus so many times in their lives. But how do we, how do we be this shepherd that finds the one sheep or the woman who finds her lost coin and, and, and rejoice? Or maybe I should say, how do we seek them out? How do we look for them? And, and it's, you know, on Sunday I, I, I wondered, you know, who is it that we know that needs a Thomas moment? That a little bit more to satisfy whatever it is that they have so that they would be able to come and rejoice and say, you know, you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, my Lord and my God. Um, and I think about this, the Jesus parable of the woman. who She lost her coin. She knows it's in her house, or at least she assumes it's in her house. And, and she turns on the light so that she can see better. I mean, when you're, you know, and when you're looking for something, I mean, yeah, you need more light. And, and um, just, I mean, it's, I, I can't count the times that when I have looked for something, you know, you, you turn on a flashlight or you get, I mean, in my farm shop next door, we don't, it doesn't have real great light. So if you're looking into parts cabinets or something, different areas, you grab a trouble light then so you can see what's in there. And, and you know, seeing is equated with believing. And that's what Thomas was too. If I don't see him myself, I won't believe. So 
the light shines and 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 when things come to the light you know it's it's easier to hide things in the dark but when you turn the light on um, things become more visible and so we, we how do we how do we share how do we do that seeking out you know to of that lost sheep of the lost coin of the of the one who needs that little bit of extra encouragement but Jesus tells us that you know when there is one who has returned to faith or renewed their faith or first come to faith it's a, it's a cause for great rejoicing and not only here on earth but especially among the angels and among God because God would have everyone believe and trust in his word and in his son and in his love and grace.